What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a Chicago Bulls related video discussing the recent statistic that's shown up for the Chicago Bulls that we have failed to beat the top three teams, of course, in the East and the Western Conference, which leaves our record against those teams, 0-16. and 16. That's a very worrying sign if you're a Chicago Bulls fan, but nevertheless, we're going to be discussing if this is a thing to be worried about, if this is something you're concerned about, but also going to be a longevity approach. It's not just going to be a short-term approach. We also want to look at the longevity, the long-term approach for the Chicago Bulls and whether or not this will be something that will be concerning in the future. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to The Bull Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the current Chicago Bulls team. Of course, on a short-term perspective, are you concerned about this statistic that's shown up? On a long-term basis, are you concerned or do you think this could be potentially beneficial? We're going to be talking about this in this video because at the end of the day for the Chicago Bulls, many people have different, um, I guess, mindsets towards the Chicago Bulls. Many people like to live in the moment, talk about the present, talk about what's currently happening with the Chicago Bulls team. Many people want to take a longer-term approach, want to look into the future, want to look into what this could mean two years down the line, three years down the line, next season, things of that nature, the long-term approach approach for the Chicago Bulls. So I want to talk about both sides, try and give an unbiased opinion on both of those scenarios, and just whether or not you should be concerned, even if it is for the short term this season, about that negative approach. Now, I've said in the last video, in the game reaction against the Milwaukee Bucks, after we pretty much had a blowout loss, the Chicago Bulls are exactly where they are supposed to be. They are the fifth or fourth, depending on what you want to believe, best team in the Eastern Conference, in my opinion. It's just a matter of fact at this point. Even though, yes, injuries could have definitely prevented us from being the fifth or fourth best team in the Eastern Conference, maybe that would have dragged us into the top three or the second best, potentially the best team in the Eastern Conference. The injuries has ruined the commodities the chemistry and everything of that nature with the Chicago Bulls. I did say all of that in the game reaction. So all of those situations, as well as the Bulls, I guess, game plan for other teams, game plan against the Bulls, all of that is a hindrance and the reason why we are where we are, sitting in the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference and why we probably are the fifth or fourth best team in the Eastern Conference at this point. But that is, that is very worrying because at the end of the day, you've seen some mediocre teams. You've seen teams like Orlando maybe probably beat one of those teams every now and then. You've seen some of the worst of teams beat teams like the Miami Heat. Miami Heat recently lost to Philadelphia without Joel Embiid and, be and um, James Harden. I almost said Ben Simmons there, flash in the past there, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, they beat the 76ers are a great team with both of them there, but arguably with both of them not there, they're definitely not a team that should be anywhere near that top East the conference C. So at the end of the day, this is a lot for the Chicago Bulls to take in. It's eye-opening, as I've said countless times. It puts things into perspective. It puts us in an understanding of the situation that we're in. And now I guess the question is, is that understanding, is that situation a bad thing for the Chicago Bulls? So we're going to be looking at the short term again first. Obviously, when you're losing pretty much three games to uh, the Miami, three games to Milwaukee, then you've lost four games to Philadelphia, the top three seeds in the East. And I believe out West, we've lost twice to Phoenix, twice to the Warriors, twice to Memphis. Yeah, things get a little bit hectic over around here with the Chicago Bulls. And I can't blame anybody if they're going to be worried. And for the short term, I 100% agree people are concerned and worried. If you're looking at this playoff picture, if you're looking at this season, and you think this season is an opportunity to win a championship, you have every right to feel worried about what's happening with the Chicago Bulls at this point in time. If you're talking about the short term as well, you've heard Billy Donovan speak about trying to find answers recently. You've heard Alex Caruso and DeMar DeRozan say it's not a talent issue, it's an execution issue, and all of these situations. So if you're looking at the short term, having these things come out, for the Chicago Bulls is awfully concerning and it definitely puts things into perspective about whether or not a championship is achievable, whether or not we can get there this season. There's players on this team that are openly admitting 
and potentially giving reasons as to why we are struggling at the moment. And they have no other choice to do that because if they say we're not struggling, they're only lying to themselves as well as to the rest of the world. They have to open up and they have to admit what's been going on for the Chicago Bulls. And if execution is the issue, then there are bigger problems at stake here than just what we're seeing on the basketball court every game. There's more of a training issue that could potentially be involved. Uh, Alex Crusoe said it's not a talent issue. Maybe... Just maybe it's a structure issue. It's the style of play that's the issue. Maybe it's the way that we approach the game mentally is an issue. These are all issues that, again, I can't confirm that the Chicago Bulls have. Maybe they don't have those issues. But the reality is, if there is execution problems on the court, there is a variety of reasons as to why that's happening. So if you're looking short term, absolutely, this is a concern. When you're not beating the best teams in the East and the West, that's a very big concern. Because at the end of the day, in the playoffs, who are you going to be versing? If we get out of the first rounds, guess who we're going to be versing? It's going to be one of the top three in the Eastern Conference, that's for sure. If we sit right now in the East, fifth versus fourth, we beat the Boston Celtics. Even if Boston beat us, because I classify Boston in this stretch of games, a fantastic team, a great defensive team that will slow any team down, especially on the road. That's how they're playing at the moment. If you see the Chicago Bulls beat the Boston Celtics, you're going to be versing the Miami Heat. You're going to be versing the Philadelphia 76ers. You're going to be versing the Milwaukee Bucks. And at this stage, we'll be versing the Miami Heat. You could say that we feel confident about that situation, but the statistics say otherwise. We are 0-3 against the Miami Heat, and one of them was very close with our fully healthy team. The other two were complete and utter blowouts and not even worth a mention if you're a Chicago Bulls fan looking at optimism. It's just that type of situation at the moment. So absolutely should be worried. You should definitely feel worried, and I'm worried as well ahead into these NBA playoffs but that doesn't mean you can't be optimistic that doesn't mean even though you're worried you still have to have faith you've got to support this team 100% of the time even if you're worried deep down inside if you express your worry if you're upset all of these situations that all come part of the package of supporting the Chicago Bulls if you feel angry and you want to criticize this team that's part of supporting the team the team has its criticisms people want to speak about the team that's all part of supporting when you're happy and excited about the Bulls winning that's all part of supporting at the end of the day yes you should be worried you should be concerned it's a completely unacceptable stat it's a very poor stat to have on your season and it puts dampers on everything but again this could definitely change as well one win can change it all if we beat the milwaukee bucks the next time we verse them then that stat becomes a little bit more irrelevant so at the end of the day we've got to win over a big team and maybe that belief can be instilled upon them within that next game maybe the same against miami or whoever we have to face heading into this next stretch of games that's considered an elite team that's definitely things where we can look forward to if we can find a way to win those games. If we don't win any of those games, then yes, again, more concern will begin to be asked about the Chicago Bulls. So short term, absolutely. I definitely feel a little bit worried about how this team's going to go in the playoffs. I'm hoping we're not going to end up embarrassing ourselves in the playoffs. I don't think that we will embarrass ourselves. I think this team has enough veteran players to make a good, I guess, um, name for themselves. Not necessarily, uh, I guess steal the show, maybe get to the finals or anything like that. I would love for that to happen. And there's always going to be elements of faith in me that will back the Chicago Bulls team to go as far as it could possibly can. But with all things considered, we need to see this team at least have a good showing in the NBA playoffs to prove to themselves and to prove to the rest of the fans that... Even though this season might not be our year, maybe it will be, maybe it won't. There's always going to be another season where we can get better. We can have those battle scars being used to our advantage. And again, DeMar DeRozan said, if we don't know what it feels like, we're going through it now. The expectation on what's going to take to beat good teams. That's what DeMar DeRozan is going through right now. That's what the Chicago Bulls are going through right now. Let's look at the long-term approach so we don't make this video too long. A long-term approach is actually, in my opinion, benefits the Chicago Bulls. Now, I know how you're going to say losing at the end of the day. How could that ever be a benefit towards a team? And for the short term, it's definitely not a benefit. If you're looking solely at this season, it's never a benefit to lose games. But we have a lot of young players on this team. 
Kobe White, considered a young player. Patrick Williams, recently returned young player. Ayo Dosumu is a rookie. We have a lot of young core pieces to this team that still don't know what it's like to win, what the winning attitude has to be, how to put your game on the table every single night to make sure you win these close games and you also don't fall into trap games that the Bulls have often done quite a few times in the past. Those young players have been involved in a lot of those scenarios, especially last season with Kobe White and Patrick Williams. We lost a bunch of trap games, games that we shouldn't have lost. So coming into a different mentality, a different environment, a different team, and trying to overcome those situations in one season will never be easy for a young player. So we've got a lot of young core pieces. Even players like Zach Levine has never really been on a winning team before. He has to learn these winning habits like everybody else does, like all these young players do. Same with Lonzo Ball as well. Lonzo Ball has never been in the NBA playoffs. He's played winning basketball in college, but almost every one of these guys has played winning basketball in college. It's a different breed over here in the NBA. There are a bunch of guys. Ayo Dosumu has never been in the playoffs. Kobe White's never been in the playoffs. Patrick Williams has never been in the playoffs. Zach Levine has never been in the playoffs. So at the end of the day, long term, losing these tough games and knowing what it's going to take next time around, next season, two years down the line, three years down the line, you keep the core components of this team together, they get an opportunity to gel, to have even more chemistry go their way, to hopefully have healthier seasons next year. We will start to learn how to pick up winning habits, winning mentalities, winning abilities, and we'll be able to perform much better over the course of two years, three years down the line. But again, many people will say we don't have two or three years down the line. Maybe big roster changes will have to be made this season or next season. And I can't predict the future. So I'm not going to mention that we should be trading for this guy or trading for that guy or trading the guy on our team. Right now, all I can see in a long-term vision is the core team being stuck together. And until things change in that area, that's what I'm going to go with in this video. In terms of this core component of team together, the winning habits will begin to be learned within the next couple of seasons. You might see a couple of players on the decline, but with that being said, you will also see players begin to rise. You will see Patrick Williams hopefully take extra leaps within his NBA season. Kobe White, if he's still here, will hopefully have the same. And we know Ayo Dosumu has had a fantastic first year, and he could definitely have leaps towards his NBA career as well. There will be players on the rise on this team, and there will be players on the decline on this team. So hopefully that could balance out, but obviously on a long-term approach, Winning habits for teams that are stuck for a long time are obviously much better than teams being joined together. I mentioned the Golden State Warriors. All of those players were drafted together and had to play together their entire careers in order for them to have the season that they had where they broke the record for most wins and they didn't win a championship that year, but they've won multiple championships ever since. Same with teams like, again, LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. How long did LeBron James take to get to the NBA Finals? Only to get swept by the Spurs, who speaking of has had all of their seasons together as a team trying to develop winning habits and they won some NBA championships. It doesn't happen in one season. Even Miami in their first year, they lost to the Dallas Mavericks. It, you can list a bunch of examples, Milwaukee and Miami in recent terms as well. The reality is teams will take a longer approach to try and get to that promised land. Some teams may never get there. Let's hope our team won't be that, but some teams do get there and they get there through multiple years of playing together. The core team stuck together. They do it with a lot of hard work and dedication and they often do it with a bunch of failures behind their back, a bunch of tough losses, losses they want to get out of their mind, losses they wish will never happen. As Michael Jordan used to say, I failed over and over and over in my life and that's why I succeed. You got to go through some of these failures against uh, these tough teams in order to succeed. To go 0-16 is a failure for the Chicago Bulls and hopefully in the future that's why they'll succeed. At least that's the approach that I have and I have to have that approach because if I'm going into next season and saying the Bulls are not going to win anything again, then what's the point of being a supporter? You're just basically giving up as soon as it begins. I don't want to be that fan. So I'm going into next season when next season approaches with the mindset that we can be better than this season. And this season isn't over yet. So if you're looking at a short-term approach, there's still work to do this season for us to be as best as we can be. If that's a championship level team or a team that falls just short of it, whatever the case may be, there's always room to improve and the improvements start 
right now. It starts a couple of hours. It starts in a couple of days against the Pelicans. We got work to do here. So short-term, long-term approach, two different answers. But answers, I feel like, will definitely come together at one stage or another. And if we end up winning a championship at one stage, you look back at these moments with this team. If they can end up reaching that promised land and potentially getting something special for themselves, putting themselves in the history books, you're going to look back on these moments and you're going to be, it's going to be a blessing in disguise in many ways. So... Again, I'm not trying to be an inspirational person or anything like that. I'm just looking at how I see it. That's personally how I see it. That's how I believe. And that's how I choose to believe to support the Chicago Bulls team. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm glad you guys agree. But thank you for watching nonetheless. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Had to get a few things off my chest nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen. Again, supporting the Chicago Bulls right now, it's a bit of a struggle. Many people have kind of tuned out the Chicago Bulls in many ways. And I want to be that that person that makes the same content when we lose compared to when we win. I want to be that person that in the end, no matter how badly the Chicago Bulls are playing, I've I've made videos under the Jim Boylan era. Trust me, I've seen a lot of bad things and most of you have seen a lot of bad things either. So I want to be consistent in what I try to do and hopefully this is a step forward. Of course, I really think I have been consistent anyway. But a step forward to show that even with this great team, supporting them when they're failing, criticizing them as well if they need to be criticized, it's not a bad thing to do. And I really hope more people will end up doing it over the course of time. Have a wonderful and safe day, Bulls Nation. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned. One more. Take care.